I'm Blake Carver, the videographer and video editor here at Toastmasters International's World Headquarters. We're about to take a trip through Toastmasters history. And what better time to take this trip than during our organization's centennial year? Over our many decades, Toastmasters has produced a lot of motion picture content, both for educational and marketing purposes. And when World Headquarters relocated from Southern California to Colorado in 2018, it gave our team the opportunity to identify and preserve all the valuable film and video media we had in our possession. And we had a lot. We had everything from 8mm and 16mm black and white film to somewhat obscure video formats like Umatic, Betamax, and of course, VHS. Before we even began, we anticipated several potential challenges. One of the biggest enemies of film and video media is time. The simple act of being left undisturbed on a shelf for decades is enough to potentially cause irreversible damage. Another challenge was we didn't have a clear picture of what exactly we had in our possession. For example, some of the adhesive labels that were attached to the tapes and storage boxes had just fallen off at some point and were lost forever. Or there was a label, but there was no context as to what it actually contained. A simple solution would have been for us to just play everything and go from there. But trying to find a reliable U-Matic VCR or film projector today can be challenging. Needless to say, this project became somewhat of a blind race against time. Luckily, we found an expert digitization laboratory here in Colorado that has done an incredible job of preserving our media in a high resolution digital format. The videos we're about to watch aren't everything we've had digitized, but they'll give you a sample of the variety of motion picture content we've produced over the years. And at the very least, should be fun to watch. Some of these have been trimmed down for time, but their overall message is still very much intact. One thing to keep in mind when watching these videos. Toastmasters International has culturally evolved over the course of its 100 year history. These films and videos are time capsules in a way that demonstrate the attitudes and practices of the organization and of American society more generally at the time of their creation. For example, as you might know, Toastmasters membership did not open to women until 1973. And you'll get a sense of that, especially in some of these earlier videos. I'm mentioning it now so you aren't completely taken out of the viewing experience when you inevitably notice it. The first video I'm going to show you is one of my favorites because we get to actually see and hear our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley, talk. This is called Accustomed As I Am, and it was produced sometime around 1960. Shortly before this film was made, an article appeared in Reader's Digest extolling the benefits of joining Toastmasters. This article generated a lot of public interest in Toastmasters, so this film was produced to give more information and get the most out of this rare marketing windfall. Here is Accustomed As I Am. Toastmasters International. The meeting will now come to order. Greetings from Toastmasters. My name is John Kennedy. John Milton Kennedy, that is. I live in Van Nuys, California, and have been a member of the Burnt Toastmasters Club there for the past three years. As a man speaks, so is he. A Roman scholar, Publius Cyrus, said those immortal words back in 43 BC. Today, Toastmasters International is proving the truth of these words. The nerve center for this worldwide organization is in Santa Ana, California. 
And here to tell you more about it is Maurice Forley, Executive Director of Toastmasters International. Mr. Forley. Thank you, Toastmaster John M. Kennedy. In a moment, you will be a guest at a Toastmasters meeting where members put into practice their motto for better listening, thinking, speaking. You will see a group that is typical of more than 3,200 Toastmasters clubs that meet every week in some 40 countries located throughout the free world. Since its inception, the Toastmasters program of self-improvement and self-expression has benefited more than half a million men. While many Toastmasters become excellent public speakers, this is not the purpose of the program. The purpose of Toastmasters is to help all its members help themselves by learning to speak effectively and with confidence at any time and under any circumstance. Because it has proved its usefulness over the past half century, Toastmasters enjoys a wide appeal. It has received support both here and abroad from business, the professions, and industry from all branches of the military and from hundreds of educational institutions and organizations. What is the story behind Toastmasters? No man knows it better than its founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. Dr. Smedley. Toastmasters grew out of an effort to meet the needs of a group of men in Bloomington, Illinois, more than half a century ago. In those days, I was a YMCA secretary. Many of the men with whom I was associated in that work needed help in talking and in meeting other people. They had ideas, but they did not know how to express them. However, they did not want a formal class in public speaking. And when I suggested a club in which they could learn to talk by talking, they welcomed the idea. I believed in the sound pedagogical principles of learning by doing and improving through helpful suggestions or constructive criticism, as I preferred to call it. Businessmen, professional men, laboring men, men of a variety of occupations came into the club and they were surprised by the results which they achieved through following our simple process of practice and criticism. We were strictly an educational group. We avoided the atmosphere of the classroom and we learned in moments of enjoyment. As men in other communities heard of our plan, they desired the same training for themselves. It is gratifying as I look back over our development through the years to know that the growth has been the result of the desire of men to improve themselves in speech and in communication with other people. Yes, many thousands of men throughout the free world have profited by Toastmasters training and have been led into more productive living, more satisfactory living, by this means. I hope to see many thousands more given the advantage of this training in the years to come. And now, through the electronic miracle of videotape, that newest of media contributing to the world of communication and importantly to the program of education by television. And to through the facilities of the Oklahoma Educational Television Authority, station KETA-TV, we are privileged to visit Oklahoma City and look in on a meeting of a typical Toastmasters club. A group of real people, unrehearsed, doing a real job. And of course, at this time, we'll go into the speaking portion, which includes the impromptu part and also includes two prepared speeches. So at this time, to handle the impromptu part of our program, I'll introduce the gentleman who takes care of the table topics. His name is Ference Perviance, and at this time, Mr. Perviance, will you take over? Thank you, Toastmaster Paul Rudell. Fellow Toastmasters, we only have two table topics this evening. 
I've selected for the first topic something to do with Oklahoma history. And the reason I have done this is because I am a transplanted Arkansan. I've been in Oklahoma three years, and since my children are growing up in Oklahoma, I'm having to study Oklahoma history with them. I'm hoping to pick up a point or two from one of my speakers this evening. I'm particularly interested in Will Rogers and the fact that he said, I never met a man I didn't like. Austin Mills, will you come in on this for me? Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, we Oklahomans are just... The ability to express oneself. This is why men join Toastmasters. Too, because in all his travels over the globe, when he checked into a hotel, he always wrote on the register, Will Rogers, Claremore, Oklahoma. A system of scheduling among members is devised so that parts on the program are equitably distributed among all members. Each member speaks sometime during each meeting. And I agree with him because there's one species that I just can't stand. And he's the fellow who won't let me do the talking. Now we hear, we hear a great deal nowadays about how to win friends and influence people. Recently, I was meeting with a gentleman whom I wanted very much to influence. So when we met, I greeted him warmly and shook his hand and smiled. And I listened to him tell me what a wonderful businessman he was. And I inquired about his health. That man talked for almost an hour. And when he left, I knew that I had made a friend for life. But gentlemen, what an enemy he had made. <laughs> so I can understand Will Rogers when he said, I hardly ever met a man I didn't like. Thank you, Toastmaster Mills. This should cure me of trying to get specific information on Oklahoma history. I think I'd better go into a more general field for my second topic. I had several selections here. And Bill Baker, I would like to ask you a question and let you answer it in your own way. Do we have representative government? Mr. Topics Master, and gentlemen, there's really only one answer to this question. Of course we have representative government. Our Constitution clearly states how our government was formed and how our representatives are elected. You know, we are a nation of hobbyists, not lobbyists, but hobbyists. There are stamp collectors, there are bird watchers, and there are critics. Among those are the Men who go to the football game and criticize the coach. Those who go to the baseball game and shout insults at the umpire. And then there's left this great group who sit back in their chair comfortably and criticize government. This training is designed to benefit the member in extemporaneous talks. The ability to think clearly on the spur of the moment. He's like a kibitzer at a card game. He's willing to offer a lot of free advice, but he doesn't want to get into the game. Now, whether or not we are represented depends upon you. Are you willing to run for public office? Are you willing to gather enough information so that you can vote intelligently? Eisenhower says that our great American heritage is threatened by the indifference of the people, that the future of this great republic is in the hands of the voter. Thank you, Bill. Well, although I haven't gotten history straight, I've certainly learned a lesson in government. I do feel that my correction by Toastmaster Mills on my quotation of Will Rogers proved that I was grammatically correct. Mr. Toastmaster, this concludes the table topics portion of the program. Thank you very much, Harris. Gentlemen, with that, we'll go into our regularly prepared speeches. And as you know, of course, these gentlemen have been working on these speeches for a week or so. They've had their topics, and they've been able to put a lot of time into their preparation. You have been watching a somewhat condensed version of a Toastmasters Club meeting. Interesting, wasn't it? You know, when each of the men we have just seen first faced the prospect of speaking up before the group, he suffered a giant-sized case of weak knees and butterflies in the old tummy. But Toastmasters put him on his feet and taught him how to speak with confidence. So if you would like to visit a Toastmasters club or are interested in starting one, why not drop a line to 
Toastmasters International, Santa Ana, California. Write today. You'll hear by return mail, and you'll be glad you did. This next video is called Speaking Effectively to One or One Thousand, created as a public speaking education film. It was produced around 1980, and from what we can tell, was the result of a partnership between Toastmasters and a production company called Sunset Films. We didn't actually produce this film ourselves, but we were featured prominently in it. Here is Speaking Effectively to One or One Thousand. Thank you. Mr. President and fellow delegates, my heart starts pounding. I'm very pleased to be here today. My mouth is so dry. Welcome to the 10th annual fashion show. My palms are sweating. Madame et Monsieur. I can't swallow. It's a pleasure to introduce. I can't even remember my own name. The Sunday Times of London first reported the findings of a study in which 3,000 people were asked to identify what terrified them the most. Some were afraid of heights, some afraid of the dark, some were afraid of bugs, some were afraid of snakes, some afraid of dying. But the single most compelling fear most often mentioned was the fear of public speaking. The fear of speaking before a group is both unnatural and learned. In this film, we will explore the communication factors that will enable you to rapidly become as effective communicating before an audience as you are to one person. Whether you speak to one or to 1,000, your ability to communicate effectively is the single most important activity of your life. History has proven that the ultimate determination of a leader's effectiveness is his ability to communicate. Without a doubt, the same is true for each one of us. And yet many of us have learned to be uncomfortable speaking in front of a group, a situation most of us must face. A major part of the problem is that we tend to separate public speaking from other kinds of communication. And that's the key. The very same factors that make us effective communicators in our lives make us effective public speakers. We can all extend our ability to communicate. So let's take a look at these very important communication factors. Regardless of what we're trying to communicate or whom we're trying to communicate with, all communication has one message in common. This is me. This is who I really am. And that presentation can be quite risky, particularly Anderson. if we're not familiar with our audience. Dr. Anderson is our newest member. He's just moved here from Chillicothe, Ohio. But we can minimize this risk greatly by recognizing this constant of communication, the this is me factor. To the extent that we are aware of it, we can do something about it. We can strive to make this is me the best message we can. I'd like you to meet the newest member of our staff from Trenton, New Jersey. This is... We can also realize that we're all saying, this is me, together. We're all taking the same risks. Do you want to play my way again? We not only want to succeed as communicators, but the people we're trying to communicate with usually want us to succeed too. That's true whether we're communicating one to one or one to a thousand. Thank you very much. The this is who I really am factor is what binds all of us together. It's the one message we're all putting out, all the time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, if the first communication factor is that we're always saying, this is me, then the second factor is actually what we don't say. In other words, our communication without words. Our bodies, our expressions, the way we dress, our posture, the way we sit, stand, walk. 
A lot of things. I didn't bring my resume today or anything. Our whole nonverbal selves can say as much, if not more, than the largest vocabulary. No content to the... What we don't say can reveal how we feel about ourselves, That's exactly how right. we approach other people, who we think we are, and how we think the world perceives us. Hello. I'd like to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity, the gracious opportunity, to speak here this evening. I was originally going to depart from my prepared text, but I have decided against it. That brings us to our third communication factor, which is communication skills. What are they? Let's look at eye contact first. One of the reasons for the expression scared rabbit is that a rabbit's eyes are constantly moving, nervously scanning his total environment. When we speak, this tendency can be called eye dart, and it's a very, very common problem. Psychologist answering questions uh, submitted by mail from worried Harry. It shows lack of confidence, denoting to your audience that you're either not very sure of what you're saying or not very sure of yourself. Another common eye contact pattern is the triangle. In the triangle, we keep looking at the same three people over and over again. Very well could have been last week, yesterday. Yesterday was a day... The triangle is not as bad as the eye dart, especially for the three people we're repeatedly looking at and talking to, but it won't be long before the rest of the audience begins to feel neglected and left out. Not sure which. How many people recognize the copy reader? It may be a good technique for radio commentaries, but it's not at all effective with a live audience. Instead of eye dart, the triangle, or the copy reader, we can all benefit from using the extended contact technique. Here's how it works. Maintain eye contact with the same person for four to five seconds, and then move on to another person and stay there for the same period of time. Creating, which is a hell of an easy out. This helps to draw a listener's attention. It creates an intimate environment with your audience, helps you to focus your own attention, and stay right on target. Answering questions submitted by mail. Another communication skill has to do with the old bugaboo of what to do with your hands. Actually, what to do with your hands is part of a larger question, and that is the question of overall posture and the use of gestures. Let's look at a catalog of common speaking gestures. First. There's your basic fig leaf. One person who, having neither the life jacket of talent, the stern or father, the dinghy of sufficient training, the sway, the balance on rocky shoals of contrapuntal composition, slipped beneath these waters and the jangler, in the briny deep of musical oblivion, was the Flemish composer Adam the arm lock. Whose work will concern us this evening. Orphaned at an early age, parade rest. Paris, struck down by gout and pyorrhea, respectively, little Aram was forced to seek employment and the ever-popular podium clutch. And apprenticed himself to the great Maximilian Hodenbrook. Cacciatorian soon became a master craftsman in his own right, turning out knives, axes, and swords with great proficiency. The five gestures that we just demonstrated give you something to do with your hands, but none of them work. You can use your hands for natural, well-timed gestures to help you communicate effectively. Your facial gestures are the most telling of all. The key to using gestures, posture, and facial expression successfully is to be totally natural. Remember, we communicate all the time without even trying, so it's vital to become aware of these critical factors and how to use them in a natural way when we speak to a group. While gestures and posture certainly have a lot to do with our total visual impact as communicators, so does our appearance how we dress, and how we groom. The key to remember is that there aren't necessarily any right or wrong ways, only appropriate ones. The total visual and physical impression we make as a result of our clothes, our hair, our grooming, and our physical attitude, and even things like having our coat buttoned or unbuttoned, wearing a tie or not, these all determine our impact on listeners. The key word is appropriateness. Hey, I hope I'm not late for the interview. While it is true that the greatest part of our impact comes from our nonverbal communications, words are crucially important as they do form the centerpiece of our message. Use words to create pictures. Use stories to create involvement. The more precisely and vividly we use language and words, the more effectively we communicate our mental images. The most important factor of all is confidence. 
To the extent that we believe in ourselves, our ideas, and the value of our ideas for others, will we effectively communicate. A foundation of confidence and effective speaking techniques will make us powerful communicators. If Jack had not been old and sick, or Pekingese, <laughs> it might have been a less violent event. There is a variety of ways. This combination of confidence and skills creates a delightful cycle. The more we practice our skills, the more experienced we become in expressing ourselves well, and the more confidence we build. We become caught in an upward spiral of increasing skill and self-assurance. And I'm gorgeous. Don't you agree? <laughs> Help me welcome Sherry McCann. Terrence McCann knows well about the connection between confidence and speaking skills. He's executive director of Toastmasters International and is an accomplished public speaker. But he didn't start out that way. I realized that there was such a thing as the Olympics. At a very early age, I decided I wanted to win the Olympics. So I directed my entire life until I was 27 years old to doing just that. In 1960, I won a gold medal. Suddenly, you're asked to speak before a group, and you're, you're frightened to death. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I had to speak before the Tulsa Lions Club, and I was absolutely scared to death. I joined the Toastmasters Club, and I began to improve my ability to communicate. I began to move up in business as well. Desirable. He, he says that we are what we are today because of this marvelous thing called the capitalist system and because of the vital few who were able to mold this industrial complex of America into what it is today. The final communication factor, and the one that makes all the others click, is participation. You will become a more effective communicator and speaker to the direct extent that you choose to participate. Here are some examples of people who have benefited by practice and participation. Forward to uh, future opportunities with the company. Uh, when These people participated in a two-day video workshop. They were recorded at the start of the two-day session and again at the end. Now that I've done it, I can really see the value in participation. I'm looking forward to future opportunities. That's going to get me a little bit more upset. That's going to get him a little bit more upset. And pretty soon, we're pretty damn upset. A large article or a large research project. Is. I was at the point where I developed a fear of public speaking that was so great that I was turning down speaking opportunities. And I think now, at least I'm able to contemplate an upward spiral. Upper eyelid up, you know, exposing the entire eye. My wife would leave the room and I'd do it. Writing headlines, um, assembling the material. I learned a lot about communicating and about, about how I look to other people and where my nervousness blocks me and how I can unblock it. And I'm trying to get out of there. And he's going, walk slow. Opportunities to participate are unlimited. Like the video workshop, there are many groups that can help you improve your communication skills. Participation, the last of the communication factors, must be used with all the others if you are to become an effective communicator. Remember, first you are saying, this is me, just be yourself. Secondly, your body language communicates more than you realize. There was this one mother. Eye contact, which others see very clearly, is an important sign of confidence and effectiveness and works hand in hand with natural, unposed gestures. There is no right or wrong way to dress or look, only the most appropriate way. Your language reflects who you are all the time. Your natural voice is your most effective voice. Be on target about the intention of your communications. Build confidence and self-esteem in a positive upward spiral. And last, communication can be improved only through participation. To the direct extent that you take responsibility for making the communication connection as you go about your daily life, will you create opportunities to communicate and participate? 
Take advantage of these everyday opportunities and you'll soon find, based on your own direct experience, that indeed, the effectiveness of your communication is determining the effectiveness of your life. This next video seems to have been produced sometime around the early 1980s. It's an informative sneak peek of a real-life Toastmasters meeting. We're not exactly sure where or how this video would have been showcased, but it appears to be local to the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Enjoy. The time has finally arrived. It's your first presentation before that group of expectant colleagues. Or it's your first speech in front of a room full of complete strangers. All eyes are on you, your palms are clammy with sweat, and there's a brick lodge firmly in your throat. That crowd is still staring at you. You want to run away. Exactly one second has elapsed since you walked up to the speaker's stand. That one second can last an infinity if you're speaking in public for the first time. And this is where Toastmaster clubs come in. Meeting, come to order. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Welcome to the joint meeting of Magic Word and West Portal Toastmasters. Would you assist me in bringing up Toastmaster of the Day, David Rivetti. Thank you, Carlos. It's a pleasure being your Toastmaster today. For three More than 5,000 Toastmaster one, clubs in the United States meet meeting, each week, including 75 in the Bay Area alone. At meetings like this one, you'll see lawyers, executives, salesmen, and others who deal with the public. They're all here to improve their communication skills. Some have never spoken publicly before, and others just love an audience. Do you have goals? Are you on the road to success on your goals? Or are you merely in your garage warming up your car? Prepared speeches That's usually head the agenda. The Each one is later continue. appraised by an evaluator, a grammarian, and a timer with a set of three timing say, lines. The subjects anymore. are limitless. Today they range anymore. from personal goal setting they to a fail. definition of success they to life as an fail. extra in the San Francisco Opera. So you have a written plan. You put it into action, and you do it. That's the third thing that people fail. That's why they fail. They don't do it. All the paperwork, all the goals in the world will not succeed if you don't do it. The road to your goals, the road to success. Do it. Don't let it happen. Make it happen. And you will all reach your goals. Fellow Toastmasters, success is a fascinating word that has inspired men and women to have fame, wealth, and money. It seems to be a life of emptiness and misery to a lot of people. Love is the only sane and satisfactory answer. There's no better definition you can ever find. Piccinato decided that we would wear red diapers and have our entire bodies painted with gold. Well, he thought, and we thought, we were going to get away with this. But we didn't. The police came in and said, you guys can't go out there with nothing wrong but red diapers. So with that experience, it's been my privilege, and those of my colleagues of the theater, to experience that wonderful happening of the super duper supers of the San Francisco Opera Company. Mr. Tosa. <laughs> All the evaluations are constructive and supportive because Thank each member will at one point be in the spotlight. Pitch. No one forgets Very that. We teach them how to listen by giving them the obligation to evaluate the speaker. To evaluate the speaker, you're forced to listen. And we're trained to listen carefully, not only to what he's saying, but what his body's saying and his eyes are saying, his gestures. I thought Tom's speech was excellent speech. His vocal variety was tremendous was very, very good. He had great eye contact and excellent body gestures and hand gestures. One thing I would like to make a suggestion to Tom is that when he is not using his hands, don't grab onto your lapel, please. Bob, 
I think probably one thing that you should watch are your your gestures. Your hands appear to be a little little nervous, uh, a little. Uh, you have one or two gestures that you use. I, you might might want to work on that. Prepared speeches are usually followed by table topics. Members are put on the spot without a prepared script. The whole idea is to test the speaker's ability to think on his feet. Mr. Table Topics Master, ladies and gentlemen, I certainly thank you for asking me that question, Ed. Someone asked me a similar question recently. I said, well, my favorite song, which I think defines me via love is Chariots of Fire. Valentine's Day to me has always been extremely special. It was my mother's birthday. <laughs> so we never forgot it, and it was always something really great. And naturally, my parents were people who were deeply in love. They were married 37 years. He never forgot to bring chocolates. But let's keep Babe Ruth in mind that to achieve success, we need, Vic, strikeouts. Take them in stride with the objective of knowing that we can be the home runner king in our own particular lives. Mr. Topic Master. If there's a certain inspirational, success-oriented tone to a lot of what Toastmasters talk about, it's probably due to the personal benefits meetings like this have on its members. Novice Toastmasters can use the meetings as rehearsals for the outside world. And distinguished Toastmasters, the highest rank speakers, often use their skills to spread the word that there is a place where facing the public can be made easier. The advice I would have is to face the fear and to get in front of groups. And I've learned in Toastmasters never to say no. They ask me to be a speaker, evaluator, I always say yes. And with that, you'll conquer it. And to be a guest, if you don't join the other club, be a guest speaker and keep speaking and stay in front of people. And pretty soon that fear will disappear. So if you want to put yourself in the best light when the spotlight's on you, if you want to just feel better and more confident about yourself in public, a Toastmaster Club may be the place for you. From then on, the possibilities are endless. The next set of videos are three back-to-back -back public service announcements. They're 30 seconds each and are hosted by a gentleman named Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale was a radio personality and author as well as the 1976 recipient of our prestigious Golden Gavel Award. I'm Earl Nightingale for Toastmasters International. Do you know what the world's greatest problem is? It's our inability to communicate with one another. Do you know who can solve this problem? You can and I can. Next time you're talking with someone, take some time to really listen to what he or she is saying. You'll be surprised at what a difference this simple expression of interest will make. Give it a try and help make our world a better place to live. I'm Earl Nightingale, and this is the Toastmasters International Golden Gavel, a symbol of excellence in communication and leadership. Whenever you're in a situation where you must present ideas to other people, remember this gavel and make an effort to put excellence into your speaking and listening. If we all cooperate to speak clearly and listen with an open mind, will help bring a little more understanding into our difficult world. I'm Earl Nightingale for Toastmasters International. You know, some people talk about success as though it were something to be grabbed out of another person's hands, but the greatest leaders of history have been people who are dedicated to doing their best to help others and to serve the needs of others. Success comes as a natural result whenever we give of ourselves. Let's work together to see how much we can do for others, not what we can do to them. Our last video is a short public service announcement encouraging the viewer to get the Toastmaster's Edge. This was most likely produced sometime around the early 1990s. Take a look. All the education in the world won't help you get ahead in life if you can't communicate your ideas. Every day, the competition for advancement in your job gets tougher and tougher. You need an edge. A Toastmasters Club gives you that edge. A nonprofit organization for men and women, Toastmasters gives you the confidence to express your ideas to anyone. Get the Toastmasters Edge. This concludes our brief trip through Toastmasters motion picture history. 
I hope you found these glimpses into our organization's past as entertaining as I have. Thank you for watching.